Uh, this video is about uh, the weights of patients in the ICU um, and creating a frequency distribution and a histogram with that. Now we're going to be making a histogram because we are dealing with um, continuous numerical data, right? Weight um, is continuous because you can have, you know, you can weigh 135.5 pounds or 0.3 pounds. You can have those decimals in between the two whole numbers. Uh, so we do have continuous data, which leads us to a histogram. Now, when we are creating a histogram or a frequency distribution leading to a histogram, we first need to think about, um, you know, what are um, the values along the x-axis? What are those going to be? So I'm going to be making my frequency distribution here. Now, when I look at these weights, you know, I have them in a, uh, cell A2 all the way to cell A35. And I could look through to see, you know, big, small, where am I at? But that sounds like a lot of work. So I know that I can find the minimum and the maximum using formulas in Excel. So I'm going to go to more functions because I need to see what the, the range is here of numbers. So the minimum, and I want to go from A2 to A35, just like I said before. And my smallest weight, the, the lowest weight is 122. Now the maximum weight, I'll scroll down to the maximum, again, A2 to A35. My maximum weight is 220. So if I'm thinking about the range, right, the range is the max minus the min. Notice how I just typed in, I just used the cell references. And I have 98. Now when I'm creating a frequency distribution, which let's move that over here, um, I can, I, I want, um, I want intervals. I'm not going to be able to go by ones, right? If I go 122, 123, 124, that's ridiculous. I'm going to have 98 numbers. I don't even have 98 numbers in my data set, right? That just doesn't make sense. So I need to go, um, I need to create intervals. Now, when you create these intervals, you need them to be of equal width. So it doesn't necessarily matter how big or small your interval is, but each interval needs to have the same, you know, uh, number of numbers in it. And you also don't want two intervals or three intervals. You want five minimum um, and usually like 15 maximum. So you're really shooting for something like seven to 10 is about perfect. So when I'm looking at 98, that's pretty close to 100. So you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go by tens and I'm going to, I'm going to start with 120. So I'm going to go from 120 to 129.99. Okay. And the reason I'm not going to go to 130, because if I, I just, I'm going to erase this here, but if I go from 120 to 130, well, what does my next interval start at? If it starts at 130, well, where does the number 130 go? It now fits in two different data sets, and that doesn't work. So I need my, uh, the upper bound of one interval cannot be the same as the upper bound uh the lower bound of the next interval. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way up to include my maximum number. So I complete my intervals, and these intervals do represent the weights. If you notice, the last, uh, I want to make this bold so it stands out. There we go. The last one, I needed 220 because 220 is my maximum. So I did need, even though 220 is the maximum number, you want them to all be the same. So I have all of my intervals. They're all the same width and no number will fit in two different intervals. Okay, so now when you're doing your frequency, now this is a little bit different. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to uh, move this over um, because if we're going to use the frequency distribution, uh, the frequency formula, excuse me, I need what we call bins. Okay, and I'm going to use that word because that's what Excel uses. And the bin is just the upper bound for each number. So the frequency formula can't deal with intervals. It can only deal with numbers. So um, with the bins, they all go up by 10. So if I click on 129 and drag to highlight both of these, then I put my cursor over this green square, I can drag down and it will automatically auto populate with the upper bound for each interval. Now using the bins, I can now find my frequency. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top bar, uh, this top cell, H3, and I'm going to drag all the way down. So I'm going to find the frequency of all of these uh, intervals. 
So I'm going to go to formulas. We're going to use the frequency formula. So we're going to frequency. Now, the data array is where is your data? Well, our data is from A2 to A35, if you recall from earlier. Now, the bins array, well, we, we called it bins. So this is G3 all the way to G13. That's all of my bins. Now, if I just click OK, it's only going to give me the frequency in the top H3. I want the frequency in all of them. So I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Enter. Okay, so again, just typing that out, I hit Control, then Shift, then Enter. Those are the three keys that I hit in that order. Hold down Control, then hit Shift, Enter. So you hit all three keys. Now, just to be aware, you might want to auto sum your frequency. Yep, I have 34 numbers in my data set, so I know that they're all there. It's just a quick check. Okay, now when we go to create our histogram, and this is going to be a couple uh, steps here, but I'm going to use these two columns. Okay, I would like to use these columns, but that's a little bit tricky. I'm just going to, I'll change them in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to uh, click on this. Uh, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to go to Insert, Recommended Charts, and I'm going to get myself a bar graph. Okay, and we're going to have to change this bar graph a little bit because, again, we wanted a histogram. Well, let's do that. Uh, we'll do that in a minute with a histogram. First thing I want to do is I'm going to change the title. I've got all kinds of things to do. This is weights of patients. I spelled patients wrong over there. Patients in the ICU. All right. So the other thing that I want to do is I want to change these uh, these titles here. All right. So we want to change these. Now, when I, you can see how they're highlighted. And if they're not highlighted, you just click down and you can see now there's a box around these labels. Well, I'm going to right click and you see select data, right? So it's the horizontal axis that I want to edit because I don't want them to be the bins. I want them to be the weights. So you can see behind my graph that the bins are in the rotating green box. Well, I'm just going to click on the interval and drag. Click and drag so that the weights are now in the rotating box and hit enter. Look at my graph. Okay, look at my, now I have the intervals. So I'm getting somewhere here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my axis titles before I turn this into a histogram because I want my titles to be great. These are weights. And over here, these are frequency as we know. Oops, I can't spell. That's why I teach math. Okay, now to be a, uh, to be a histogram, we know that our bars need to touch. So I'm going to double click on any of the bars. It doesn't matter. You can see it brings up this format data series, and this little arrow thing is pointing towards the bars. Well, the gap width is what we're talking about. We want the gap width to be zero, because gap width means there's no gap between the bars. So you can see now my bars are touching, and you might say, Becky, that looks horrible. And you're right, it does, because you can't differentiate between the bars. So I'm going to click on it. You can see how all of my bars are now highlighted. Well, if I right click, they're all highlighted. You get this outline. So you can go, hey, I'm going to outline in black. And look, it outlines each of your bars. Now, if you want to get crazy, you know, you could outline in red. You can do whatever you want. It's your world. I'm just living in it. But you want to, when you double click and it brings up the format data series, see how now it's in like the color piece? Click on the bars, gap width to zero. That's what makes it a histogram. So we now have a beautiful histogram here where my bars touch outlined in red with all of my labels and your frequency distribution now if you're like um super you know you want this to be a prettier distribution i'm going to just go ahead and highlight all this i'm going to copy this and i'm just going to paste it right below and i'm just going to copy this and i can paste it right below except there's no reference you might have if you want them to be pretty because they're referenced from cell references but you could rewrite them if you want the weights next to the frequency to make them prettier um, that's kind of up to you I don't know what I just did this right here is totally fine if you're doing a project for me um, but if somebody else gets picky you might have to uh, move that somewhere else so anyway there's different ways that you can organize things in Excel move things around you could have put the bins over here and had the frequency next to it right there are different ways to do that but um, overall that is the process of creating a histogram in Excel 
using a frequency distribution.